Welcome to Sneaky REST APIs with Django Ninja. My name is Christopher, and I will be your guide. This course is all about the Django Ninja package, which is used for building REST interfaces in your Django project. You're going to learn about REST APIs, Django Ninja, URL arguments and query strings, serialization through schema and model schema classes, CRUD operations, authentication, and error management. Django is a pretty big framework, and as such, this course doesn't cover it. You're going to need basic familiarity with some of the key concepts of Django, including models, views, and URLs. I'll occasionally be using the management shell, so you'll need to know how to get into that. And I'm going to be using some sample data, so you'll either need to know how to load fixtures from the sample code or use the Django admin to enter some of your own. If you need to brush up on any of these concepts, you may want to read another tutorial or take another course first. Links below can point you at some possible material to get you started. To demonstrate the REST interfaces I'll be building, I'm going to be using a command line tool called curl. If you haven't used it before, it allows you to grab the contents of a web page, among many other things. Most Unix-like operating systems come with it installed. For those that don't, or if you're using the versions of Windows that don't come with it, you'll need to grab it if you want to code along with me. REST is short for Representational State Transfer, and it is a standard that isn't a standard. It's more of a coding pattern, which is in very common use. It's built on top of HTTP operations like GET and POST, and uses the HTTP request and response bodies for payloads. Typically, your data is encoded in either JSON or XML inside of the payload. REST is the de facto way of doing single page applications nowadays. You use something like Django for the server, and then Vue or React or Angular or whatever else for the front end, with REST being the communication glue between the browser and the server. Ninja is a library that helps you write REST interfaces on top of your Django views. It is heavily inspired by FastAPI and uses decorators to change your view into a REST call. Ninja includes a layer that handles the serialization and deserialization of your data, meaning you have less code to write. It also provides several different ways of doing authentication and has a solid exception management mechanism. REST isn't meant to be too complicated. And Ninja gives you several ways of organizing your code, a flexibility that allows you to keep it simple for small projects or have a bit more definition for your larger ones. Next up, I'll start you on your journey by giving an overview of REST. If you're already comfortable with REST, gets, posts, puts, deletes, and JSON payloads, feel free to skip this. Lesson three is where I introduce Ninja. In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to REST. REST is short for Representational State Transfer, and it is kind of a standard, more like a suggestion. It was originally defined by Roy Fielding in his PhD dissertation. Since it was a PhD dissertation, it goes into all sorts of details, but it truly boils down to using HTTP protocols for communication and some sort of serialization for payloads. In most cases, only a subset of calls is implemented. I often end up with interfaces that only ever use gets and posts, not bothering with anything else. A lot of that depends on who is consuming your interface. If you're building a generic API for others to use, you want something more robust. If you're just building the back end that your front end devs are using, you build what you need and skip everything else. This means that documentation of your API becomes rather important because someone writing against it can't really assume what is there. The end result tends to be rather minimalist, which is actually a good thing, as what you build and what you need typically is much lighter weight than competing protocols like SOAP. There are five main HTTP operations that are usually used in a REST interface. Get which is what your browser is doing when you view a web page, is used for getting an object or a list of objects. Post, which is what your browser is doing when you submit a form, is for creating an object on the server. 
The request body contains the fields needed for creating the new thing, and the response usually contains the newly created thing. Post can also be used to update an object, but using put instead makes it clearer when you're doing a create versus when you're doing an update. Like with post, the body for put contains the data for the new state of the object. Patch is another way of doing an update. Put is supposed to send all the fields for the object, whereas patch only sends those fields that change. Again, nothing enforces this, but stick with the convention or you'll confuse your API users. Finally, delete, somewhat predictably, is for deleting a given object from the server. This usually takes just the ID of the thing to be removed. Let's define an interface for a library. I mean a room with books in it rather than the programming kind. First off, I want to get a list of available books. The URL indicates what kind of resource I'm trying to fetch. The API may also have an author's list, a publisher's list, and more. The response to this call would contain a serialized list of books. Depending on the API, it might contain just some IDs, but more likely it'll contain enough data that the list of books can be presented to the user. So title, author info, any of that kind of stuff would be embedded. If I have a book's ID and I want info on just that book, I use a different URL. A common pattern is to append the ID to the same base URL as the listing. Calling this URL without an ID gives the list. Calling it with the ID on the end gives the single result. This maps nicely to how Django uses arguments in URL paths. Great, so I can look up a book. Now, how do I create one? The HTTP POST operation is used for creation. It also uses the same base URL. The different HTTP method is what indicates that I'm doing something different, the create instead of a fetch. The body of the request will include some set of name value pairs with the needed data for creating a book entry on the server. Here, I'm passing the title and the author. It's common practice for this call to respond with the newly created object using the same format as what you would get if you called get with an ID. If I want to update that book, I use the same base URL, a specific ID, and then call the HTTP put operation. Like with post, I send the book's attributes in the request body. The only difference here is that instead of creating a new book, book number 23 will have its fields set to the given values. By convention, a put call should include all the writable fields for the book, all the same fields used in the post. Patch is very similar, but you only need to send what has changed. In this case, I'm updating the title. All other fields will get left alone. Being a lazy developer, I often only implement the put and not bother with the patch. Part of that has to do with the front-end libraries I'm using, which usually just send everything that's in the object. That being said, the patch is more flexible. You can always send all of the fields. Finally, if I no longer want the book in the database, I use HTTP delete. Once again, same base URL, and once again, giving the ID of the object to be manipulated. REST is intentionally vague about the data. It doesn't care. On one hand, that means you can't make any assumptions about an unfamiliar interface. On the other, it gives a lot of flexibility. Although you could build your API to use any sort of serialization, JSON and XML are the most common. And even then, XML is starting to fade a bit. I'm typically only seeing JSON around. Of course, there are variations on JSON and multiple kinds of JSON. So, you know, it still keeps things interesting. Here's an example. If I want to use the curl command to fetch a list of books, I would give the URL to curl and it would spit back JSON. As JSON without new lines and tabs can be a bit hard to read, I often pipe this through a Python program that pretty prints the JSON. The program is built into the standard library and you can call it with the dash M command line switch. And there's the result. The dash S argument to curl tells it to be silent. For larger payloads, curl will show a progress bar. As I'm uninterested in that info, I use dash S to turn it off. Once curl hits the server, it prints out the resulting JSON. 
I used Python to make it easier to read, and all of that ends up in the terminal. To make parsing easier, most REST APIs that use JSON always send back the same thing, an object. My example here is an object with a list inside of it named books, and each book itself is represented by yet another object. For Python programmers, this makes a quick call to JSON's load s, and you're in dictionary land, which is a happy place to be. Okay, you've got the protocol basics down pat. Next up, I'll show you how the Ninja library helps you write all this stuff. In the previous lesson, I gave you an introduction to REST and how it uses HTTP operations to act as an interface. In this lesson, I'll show you your first glimpse of Ninja. You'll have to pay close attention though, they're sneaky and tend to hide in the shadows. Ninjas are secretive, and so before earning their trust and getting them to come out in the sunlight, a little diversion. As I mentioned in the overview, I'm going to be demonstrating the APIs I write using the command line data transfer tool called curl. Most Unix-based operating systems, like Linux and Mac, come with curl installed. For Windows, you may need to install it yourself. More recent copies of Windows have started shipping with it as part of some of the development tools. So first off, check whether or not it's on your box. Once you've got it installed, you'll be using curl to do HTTP operations. It's a very complete tool and it talks all sorts of protocols. If it's on the network, there's a chance curl can talk to it. The most basic use of curl is to just give it a fully qualified URL. It will go wherever you send it and print out the response it got. There are some command line arguments though that you might find helpful. Appropriately enough for a course on Ninja, dash S is for silent. It turns off the progress indicator and other verboseness, giving you just the server's response. In contrast to silent mode is verbose mode. This tells you lots, including the headers being sent and received. I'll be using this occasionally to look at the headers coming back from the server. If you don't specify which HTTP operation, you'll be using get. If you want to use a different HTTP operation, the dash X flag with the name of the operation is how you do that. Dash D specifies contents for the request body. This is used for calls like post to send data. It can be used multiple times to send many name value pairs. And finally, dash H is for adding an HTTP request header. This example would post to the people resource, passing the F name and L name fields, and asks to be sneaky, silent, like a ninja. Okay, you know how to talk to the server using curl. Now all you need is a server. I'm going to assume you know how to get going with Django. If not, the intro lesson has some links to courses and tutorials that might be helpful for you. This course uses two libraries, Django and Ninja. So you'll need to pip install those two. Then use the Django admin command to create a new Django project. I'm calling mine Westeros. My first Django app in the project will be called Lannister. Wouldn't Game of Thrones have been even better if it had ninjas? It had pirates. An age-old internet dispute could have been settled. Don't forget to add the Lannister app to your installed apps property in your settings file. The Lannister app is only going to contain a ninja-based API file, so you won't need the usual view, test, admin, and model stubs that come when you create the app. If you've got all that done, then you're ready to go. Let's go write an API. Lion banners will furl, debts will be paid, siblings will... Well, let's just leave that alone. This is my first API call. I've created a file called api.py inside of the Lannister app. Ninja doesn't actually care where you put this stuff, but this is a pretty common place to do it. You might also put them in your views file, as technically these are views. To define a Ninja API, you'll need a Ninja API object. That isn't in this file. I usually put mine in the URLs file. I'll show you that in a second. Instead, I'm going to use a router. The router defines the routes for my API calls, and then I register those against the Ninja object, again, in the URLs file. Here, I've imported the router class so I can construct a router for the Lannister app. Then, I instantiate it. 
To define an API endpoint, you use a decorator on the view. The decorator is a method in the router class, and its name corresponds to the HTTP operation you want to perform. For my little hello world here, I'm keeping it simple, so I'm using a get. The HTTP operation decorators take several different arguments, but in the gets case, only one is required. That's the path of the endpoint. This isn't the full URL, just the end part of it. You typically name this after the resource you're fetching. Here, I'm just doing home, kind of a hello world for API endpoints. The endpoint is a view, like any other view. The decorator provides a wrapper that registers it with the router and mangles the output so that it is a valid response for the view. Like all views, this one has a request object as its first parameter. The simplest thing you can do with an endpoint is to return something that can be turned into JSON. A string or a dictionary is your most basic thing. The decorator automatically takes this, JSONifies it, and wraps it in an HTTP response object with the appropriate MIME type set. With the endpoint defined, I need to do a bit of setup and register this router. Let's look at Westeros Earls.py. Somewhere, you have to define at least one instance of a Ninja API object. I've chosen to do that in the main Earls file. You can do this elsewhere and import it, but you'll need this object to create your path definition. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to do it here. This imports the class so that I can instantiate it. And this imports the router that I defined in the Lannister app. I create a Ninja API object and then call add router. Add router takes two arguments. The first is a partial path where the routes will be located. And the second is a reference to the router itself. That home endpoint that I defined in the APIs file will show up as Lannister slash home. It actually goes one layer deeper than that, and I'll get there in a second. Finally, you need to tell Django all about this good stuff. You do that by defining a path with the Ninja API object. The full URL for the Lannister home view will be slash API slash Lannister slash home. Note that I didn't say slash at the end there. This is actually one of the few things I don't like about Ninja. It doesn't use trailing slashes. And as an old Django guy, that's both someone who is old and old at Django, this feels wrong and inconsistent, but that's the way it is. Okay, with all that defined, let's go run the Django server. And I'll open a new shell and do some curl. There's the full URL and the response. In the bottom window, you can see that a get was done against Django and it responded with the number that makes web developers happy, 200. Let's do that again. This time I'll use verbose. The greater than signs indicate the stuff that curl is sending. That's get and some headers, the host, user agent, and whatever it'll accept back. The less than signs indicate what came back. Let me just scroll down a little bit. You can see that Ninja has set the content type to JSON. That's handy, one less thing for you to do. Then after the less than signs, you can see the house words. Actually, in Season 1, Episode 5, Master Lewin indicates that this is a common saying, but not their words. Their words are hear me roar. And all retent of geekiness aside, that's your first API. Next up, getting into an argument with Ninja. That doesn't sound like the best plan, does it? Something pointy may end up somewhere unpleasant. <laughs> 